Sean, we are so excited to have you with us. Thank you so much for being our composer in residence, and we are very much looking forward to this season. Well, thank you so much. I am honored to be here and just so happy to be a part of the Lexington Hill family. How does it feel to be named the composer in residence, new composer in residence, and also what are you looking forward to working with the Lexington Philharmonic? This is the first orchestra I ever saw. You know, uh, I remember Dr. Zorn Zach would do these children's concerts, and so the, my elementary school, my middle school would go to see the Lexington Philharmonic. So it's just one of those full circle moments that I had no idea. I mean, in my wildest dreams, that I would come back and write for that orchestra, the first orchestra that I saw uh, as a kid, and being fascinated with all these musicians on stage at the Singletary Center. And so it just feels so wonderful that, that I'm now uh, part of this family and now writing for this, this orchestra. You're going to do the world premiere of a new orchestration of one of my most popular pieces called Two Black Churches. It has been on two Grammy-nominated albums uh, and performed, you know, worldwide. Uh, in fact, just in, in Wigmore Hall in, in, in the UK uh, by a really amazing baritone, Will Liverman. And so I'm excited to uh, orchestrate uh, the piano version because that piece um, uh, needs to be orchestrated. Um, uh, and, and so I can hear the full colors and spectrum of, of the orchestra. Uh, so anyway, I'm just so excited about this collaboration and, the, and how you're going to bring it to life. The first orchestra to bring this piece to life. We are also so excited about that, you know, and also Will Liverman will be here. It's going to be a huge treat, you know. Um, 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 I can't call him a rising star anymore because he has risen. Uh, and uh, one of the best, most prominent baritones in the world will be here. Uh, in my town at, at Singletary Center, premiering, uh, doing the world premiere of the orchestrated version of this piece. Sean, what was it like growing up in Lexington? Living in Lexington uh, meant uh, constant beauty, right? You know, the, 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 the natural beautiness of, of, of the city, um, the diversity of, of, of the city. Um, but as a child and growing up here, you know, I had so many people in my life that uh, supported my creativity. Um, and taught me when I couldn't afford lessons um, and really j j just invested in me. Um, and I'm so grateful because um, this town, the, the people in this town, uh, they were the ones who helped me get to where I am today. When did you start composing and who or what were your early passions and influences? I remember writing my first song at age five or six in, in kindergarten. We had this reflections competition for the public schools, and I had won. I didn't know what I was doing, but obviously there was a creative spark at me uh, at, at, the, at that age. But when I was about six or seven years old, my family and I started going to the Salvation Army Church. They have a huge music tradition. And, and you know, my family uh, was poor, um, so we couldn't afford lessons. But at the church, uh, I had these world-class musicians teach my sisters and me music. Um, one person in particular, his name is James Kerno, uh, and many of you all know him. He's an internationally known um, um, composer. Um, and I remember I was in sixth grade at LTMS, just down the street here, um, and they passed out one of his pieces in band. I'm like, I know that guy. He goes to my church. I didn't know that he was this big composer. But around the age of 13 or 14, he started giving me private lessons. And, uh, and composition, and it was so invaluable. He didn't have to do this, uh, and I still send him everything I write. He still supports me, and it's just that relationship is just so beautiful because he saw something in me uh, at, a, at that young age, and, and that's why I'm here today. Many of your works and your albums uh, feature the voice, human voice, and it's particularly fitting that our seasons is called Epic Voices. Um, what excites you about working for voice and writing for voice? So it's more uh, the idea of working with text than working with, with, with voice. Now, I love the human voice. Um, I particularly love working with Will Leverun because he is, um, he is an amazing instrument. Thank you so much, Sean, for being here today with us. We are so much looking forward to this season of playing so much of your wonderful music. Well, I'm so excited and so grateful and honored and just so privileged to have my works come to life in such a beautiful, meaningful way with my orchestra, you know, that I grew up seeing. Yeah, Lexfield. Yep. <laughs> <laughs>